Update 2 on what is now Potential Tropical Cyclone 3L. Bit of a long name, but it was formerly Invest 92L. It's located at 23.2 degrees north, 92.3 degrees west, and we are presently giving this a 90% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone. It's 8.30 p.m. in Morgan City, 8.30 p.m. in Houston this June 17, 2021. Winds of 35 miles an hour, a pressure of 1,007 millibars. It's moving to the north at 6 miles an hour and is a CDPS Stage 2. Breaking down that CDPS Stage 2, we're looking at a landfall on central or eastern Louisiana on Saturday morning. The main threat looks to be the rainfall. Other than that, the wind speed and the storm size really isn't mattering much. Uh, this means that Stage 2 is a significant damage possible tag. Here it is on the map. Of course, there are no tropical storm force winds extending from the storm as this is 35 miles an hour. Tropical storm force winds start at 39. It is a CDPS stage 2 as previously mentioned and it remains a potential tropical cyclone at this time. There is a tropical storm warning from intercoastal city Louisiana to the Alabama Florida border and it's currently 458 miles away from Lafayette, 464 from New Orleans, 464 from Houston, 512 from Gulfport, and 559 miles away from Mobile, Alabama. That would be 737 kilometers away from Lafayette, 746 from New Orleans, 747 from Houston, 825 from Gulfport, and 900 away from Mobile in Alabama. On top of those warnings, there's also one for Lake Pontchartrain, Lake Maripas, and New Orleans in terms of its metropolitan area. We have it at 35 miles an hour, although the National Hurricane Center is going slightly lower at about 30 miles an hour. Uh, there is no other intensity estimates as SATCON and ADT have been extremely slow trying to get into the system. Here's the latest cone made by AMI before the latest fix came out. We have it becoming a tropical storm with winds of 45 miles an hour before striking to the west of New Orleans. Given the fact that the lo this is going to be a very lopsided storm, this is why the tropical storm warnings that are currently in effect uh, go towards the east more than the west. It should weaken down to a depression before degenerating into a remnant low or pretty much dissipating by the time it gets into South Carolina or Tennessee by the end of the weekend. Here are sea surface temperatures around the region, we're looking at around 28 to 29 degrees uh, Celsius temperatures. A bit conducive for development, although it looks like there are some patches where it's slightly cooler, around 27 degrees Celsius. Regardless, it is beneficial and it will help keep that slow strengthening trend for this messy system. Here are the HWRF intensity things and they have been extremely slow to catch on with this storm. Really nothing that can be in a, uh, can consider accurate as this is um, not what we are expecting. They do have this dissipating before it makes landfall. And really the intensity models overall have been struggling to catch with this the entire time with none of them expecting to trouble the storm at peak. Although of course this is not true. Regardless, shear is expected to come on the rise, going up to 30 to 40 knots before landfall, which will be keeping this in terms of um, strengthening at bay. Sea surface temperatures should remain warm, and humidity should remain okay for, I guess, another day or two before it drops to uh, hostility terms. Here it is on Saladite, and uh, yeah, it's a giant mess. You can hardly tell this is developing because um, most of the convection that's been going on is really all over the place. Its center is extremely elongated, which of course is why this is a potential tropical cyclone. It is expected to organize itself eventually, but it is going to be extremely lopsided and messy for this June Gulf of Mexico storm. Regardless, it isn't going to be the winds that are going to be the main threat with this. It is going to be the flooding rainfall, and of course we'll keep you updated as this storm continues to develop.